Hello, everyone, and good evening. Welcome to our author and illustrator talk. Um, I'm Kate Woodworth with the Kingsport Public Library, and the book we'll be discussing today is Night of the Wampus, and that is by Big Small Town Books. And we have the author, Amy and Edwards, and the illustrator, Mara Buchanan, here. So we're going to ask them some questions, and you guys can submit questions as well. Uh, let's get started. Yeah. All right, so first question is for Amy. What got you interested in writing? Wow, I think I've been, I, I have like desired to be a writer since I was just little. I think second grade, I had like a, my very first writing assignment and that was pretty much it. I've been writing little stories here and there since then. And I, as far as things kind of like what we're looking at with the Night of the Wampus, my grandfather used to, I used to sit on his lap on his front porch and he would tell me stories. And one of them actually involved a critter somewhat like the Wampus Cat. So I, uh, I guess somewhere along the lines of hearing him tell me stories like that and writing my own and reading lots and lots and lots of things, I just said, I want to do that. I want to be an author and uh, making that happen. <laughs> it's great to be able to do something that you started out interested in as a child because a lot yeah. of the times we're like, oh, I want to be this when I grow up. And then, you know, maybe it changes, but that's cool. Um, so Mara, what got you interested, interested in illustrating? Well, whenever I was very young, uh, my grandmother had this room called the magic room. And it was just where all the magic happened. She would um, sew. I had an aunt that was an avid painter and I would just love spending time in there. And as I got older, I kind of learned that drawing was just kind of my way of expressing myself. And then I just got lucky and here I am. <laughs> Great. That's what happens when you encourage children to do what they like. Huh? That's great. Um, okay, so how did you guys end up working together on this book? <laughs> I kind of recruited Mara. I knew that uh, she had some really great artistic talents. Uh, she was in my very first creative writing class, and so I uh, knew most of her things that she turned in that were writing pieces had little illustrations that were oh, that's cool. uh, added alongside. So uh, I have been in touch with her for a long time since even since she graduated. And so I had this pop up this project. I was like, hmm, I wonder if Mara would be interested. And we kind of started chatting about it. And af after she read the story, it was like, I think I know what I want to do. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I'm, I'm amazed at the things that she, from reading this to seeing what she drew from that, just, wow, it's like, I can't wait for you all to see how creepy this stuff is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so Amy, what, what does your writing process in general look like? A big jumbled mess. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I've, I've studied a little on this and I've um, talked with other people and uh, apparently my style is called fly by the seat of your pants. <laughs> like you sit down and go, I really don't know what's going to happen and kind of let the characters have some leeway. And that's what happened. I sat down to, I had the instruction of it needs to be something Appalachian related and horror. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, I have no idea what to, where to start, really. I had some basic ideas, like, of legends and lore and things like that from our area. Uh, and I'm always fascinated to research those things even more. Uh, so when I sat down, I was, I was a blank screen. It's the, yeah. you know, nightmare for an author. You just a blank screen going, oh, <laughs> something happened. And yeah. first thing that I typed was some of the first lines that you'll read in the story. And I was oh. like, wow, okay, not what I thought was going to happen. But let's see, what, let's see where it goes. So fly by the seat of the pants kind of thing. I did work with a really fantastic editor at Big Small Town, uh, Amy Renee. She, uh, I have worked with her on a different project and um, I think we kind of have figured each other out like, okay, I know how to make, <laughs> she knows what questions to ask to kind of get me to go where I need to, so. That's good. All right. Um, so Mara, what does your illustrating process look like? Oh, procrastination. <laughs> um, after that, it's research, a lot of music, 
awkwardly posing in front of a camera to make sure I get angles right. <laughs> but um, depending on whatever style I'm working for, sometimes I'll ask my family members because we have a lot of lore in our family where we did come from the Appalachian Mountains. So I would ask them, hey, do you know what this creature was supposed to look like according to grandma? And they would say, yeah, it looked like this. I would just get all these different sources and I would try to kind of mesh them into one. That's cool. Okay, so speaking of, we've, we've mentioned a little bit, this is an Appalachian story. So um, I've noticed, uh, I, I got to read the book, yay, perks of being the moderator librarian person. Um, so much of this book delves into Native American folklore. Uh, Amy, can you talk about these aspects of the story? Well, honestly, I mean, I, I have heard bits and pieces and things, um, and I wanted to know more about things like uh, Wampus Cat. And so I started looking at Cherokee legends and learning more about, uh, I hate to admit, I don't know, I'm not overly well educated about the, the Cherokee Nation. Uh, so I started looking at that, and then actually lots of different tribes that are settled in the Appalachian Mountains. Uh, that I pulled different pieces of folklore and legends from to get my creatures that you're going to encounter in the story. Mm -hmm. So it was, it, I, I love this kind of research. I like learning about all of these different kinds of creatures, be they creepy or not. And I get to see where some of the things that we hear about all the time come from. Mm -hmm. So it was a neat experience. And I, I hope to get to dig some more into some uh, Native American legends in the future. Yeah, sometimes I think that's one of the fascinating parts about writing a book is just getting to learn something new, really. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Mara, what would you say is your, do you have an overall drawing style or do you like do different types of drawing styles depending on a project? I definitely do different depending on a project, but overall I would say it's sort of a anime slash cartoon slash meets realism <laughs> is what I tend to go for by default. But with this one, it was more of a uh, gothic -y gray scale with color pop, and that was something I had never done before. So doing this opened me up to a new style, and I am looking forward to trying out new styles and figuring out what I like in the future. Very cool. Actually, I uh, I noticed that because I got to see some of those uh, art images and the color was, I, I really liked the use of color. It, it was, I thought it was kind of compelling. Uh, how did you make your choices about your use of color in these illustrations? Originally, when Amy and I had discussed how we were going to color the illustrations, I had mentioned black and white. Um, funnily enough, actually for cost effectiveness at first, but it was actually mostly because that's where I'm most comfortable. I don't have a lot of experience with color, but we did want to make it pop somehow. And so I actually looked at color pop photography from weddings and other events. And I just noticed how simple it was, but how effective it was. And I decided to try and emulate that and make it more eye catching. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And it, it was, I will say it was eye catching. I liked it. It was effective. Um, the question from the audience, uh, would this book be appropriate for a 16 year old boy? He's very interested in urban legends and loves scary books and movies. I, th I think it probably would be for maybe 16 year old, like teenage and, and up. I don't know if I would do much younger than like high yeah, school. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think a 16 year old could handle it, especially if that's their, you know, area of interest, if they're into spooky things that, you mm -hmm. know, I think they could probably handle that. Very good. Um, so I have to say we have some breathtakingly beautiful national parkland around here and um, the local forests and mountains are the primary setting for this story. Uh, Amy, do you think this story could have had the same impact in another setting? Honestly, I don't, I don't think it would because I, I mean you, you have these creatures that kind of uh, hang out in the woods so that they aren't noticed as much and um, I think the woods have like an element of mystery and and of that I mean every morning I get to walk my dog and I kind of live out in the middle of nowhere and when I'm walking the dog I something if if I hear, hear a twig snap or an owl or you know it's, you have that kind of <laughs> that little oh what, what was that um we won't talk about the turkey that chased me one day but um <laughs> 
but I think to some degree that 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 adds that element to the story and and I mean I love our mountains and yeah. uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't try to set it somewhere else. So I, but, I but think, it, yeah, go ahead. No, I was gonna say I think our mountains can really contribute to the right the right mood and feeling, especially yeah. this time of year. I mean, some of the hiking trails around here, you'll even find like old houses and things that have been abandoned, and that just that's some good creep factor right there. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. So um, you, you talked a bit about um, looking at the folklore. So what, what, do you, what did you learn while working on this book and writing this book? I did not realize there were so many different um, types of creatures and legends and lore and things like that. That I mean, I've lived here all my life and I didn't, re you know, didn't really know some of these things. And I, I learned about um, other different Cherokee legends that I may choose to write about later on because there's really interesting ideas and where it comes from. And uh, so I, I learned a great deal about that and not just of Cherokee, but like I said, I used several different uh, tribes worth of lore to get us into this story. So um, I, I have some notes for future reference. <laughs> This kind of dovetails with a question we got from the audience. Um, is horror a genre you think you'll continue to pursue or was this just an experimental story to see how you like it? It was kind of an experiment, but I think I had, I had a lot of fun writing this story. The, the, the cat is such a fun narrator <laughs> yeah. uh, that I think we'll, we'll play around with that some more. And I have written other things. My first novel it was a YA novel that's set in World War II but it also has a supernatural element. There's a ghost story that's involved in the telling of the story. So I've always been fascinated by like supernatural things and uh, creatures like the wampus cat. So um, I don't know that I ever thought I would write horror, but so supernatural things, definitely. So I will maybe be able to mix those two a little better in the future. Yeah, okay, cool. Okay, um, so Mara, uh, do you have a favorite image in this book? I think without giving too much away, no. the ending scene is probably my favorite because there's so much going on. Mm -hmm. It was so fun to create. Yeah, I, I have to say personally, I was getting some uh, Princess Mononoke vibes That's when looking at some of these pictures. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, not to give anything away, but you know, like diseased forest scary supernatural things yes yeah. <laughs> so. try and make it as spooky as possible mm -hmm. i think it hit the mark i mean that's that's what i was getting from it you know um uh we have a, a question from the audience um from mara how long have you been drawing and what are your favorite things to draw i have been drawing for i would say 13 to 14 years now some of my favorite things are roses and expressions. My least favorite is hands, though. <laughs> I, I, from what I understand, I think that's a universal thing among people that draw. It's the hands are, like, tricky. <laughs> Some people just seem to have superpowers when it comes to the hands. I am not one of them, but uh, definitely facial expressions, roses, a lot of still life imagery I really like. Very cool. I, maybe this is the, the, the one of the secret reasons women like pockets, right? We just put the hands in the pockets and you don't have to worry about drawing them. Get this pocket. Oh, man. Okay. Um, so, uh, for Mara, uh, who, are, who are your favorite artists? One of my favorite artists is actually, hold on, I have to look at her name because... I had to write down how to say it. <laughs> it's uh, Lois Van Barl and Kenny. Unfortunately, Kenny passed away earlier this year, but her work was so inspiring and so colorful, and it really evicted a lot of emotion. And I feel like if anybody can make you feel something from art, then you're successful. Oh, yeah. But a lot of new age artists, I don't really know their names, unfortunately, because you scroll through Instagram and sadly, a lot of the times when art's posted, it's not by the original owner. Right. So yeah, those attribution's people, important, people. <laughs> it's very important. Mm -hmm. 
Amy, what, what sort of things do you like to read? <laughs> I read quite a lot, but I read um, mostly uh, young adult literature of, of late, and, uh, but lots of fantasy. I've read a little bit of sci-fi. Uh, I have, uh, like I said, a little bit of everything, mostly YA. Uh, I have some of my faves are like Saba Tahir, uh, Lee Bardugo, um, oh mercy, there's there's so many, but those are those are both fantasy authors, and uh, they really do such a fantastic job. I don't know that I, uh, the question was asked earlier about horror or things like that. Maybe yeah, but I don't know that I will ever be able to completely fantasy novel because mm -hmm. that whole high fantasy and creating everything. <laughs> I don't know if I, like it may happen here, but it might not happen there. So. Yeah, world world building is is a, a task. That's a, that's an undertaking. Definitely. Absolutely. Um, so since we've been talking about kind of the things you like to read and the things the artists that inspire you, um, here's here's a question. Um, has uh, from the audience has the COVID nineteen pandemic helped or hurt your creativity? Okay. <laughs> Either one. <laughs> I'm, kind of, I'm kind of a hermit. I'm okay with being a hermit. So uh, the being at home, I think, gave me more uh, time and focus to uh, get this done. And um, not quite as much procrastination time, Mara. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't procrastinate as much as I didn't have so much time at home. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's sort of counterintuitive for me because I love staying at home. But when I'm at home, I don't have to do anything. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I feel like it helped me because I had more time to focus on and and to get through edits and mm -hmm. work on some other new pieces that I'm working with right now different stories so I was okay with it but I'm glad to be back in the, the real world though where, where there are people and the air moves and you know. yeah okay so um what does uh, the collaborative process look like for you two? How, how did you work together on this? Lots of late nights playing Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> but um, while we would play this. It was uh, really fun working with Amy. She always kept me on my toes and throwing in new things just things I wouldn't have thought about. It's amazing how she was able to build a world, which she thinks that she didn't really build it, but I think she built a magnificent one. <laughs> but um, we would always just sit there and joke with each other, and we would kind of discuss what key points we thought would need to be illustrated. And it was just a very fun process working with her. And then once she would get a piece done, she would send it to me and uh, be like, okay, there's not enough blood. You gotta add some more. It needs to be done. And that was a common comment. And she's like, I'm not totally done with it yet. So, <laughs> but we would uh, bounce back and forth on, well, I mean, can you do this a little bit? And, uh, and so then we, we uh, ended up with the final product and I think it, it turned out really well. Which is, which is great. <laughs> so uh, how, how did you pick the specific scenes to illustrate in the story? That was another late night. Let's sit down and <laughs> kind of sift through things. And I, I've got the story going through it like this. And um, and in my edits, I added more information and more pieces to the story. So when every time I would do that, I'm like, I should probably send that to her. She might want to, you know, take something from that. Mm -hmm. uh, so we sat down with the original story and kind of went, what do you think? would be the mo more important pieces and which can be full page like full open book pieces and which should be like just a page or just a small illustration and a chapter heading or something like that and uh, i think we that was we sorted that stuff out and if we needed something extra i just like hey mara <laughs> <laughs> that was fine i didn't really know what to do with my downtime after everything was said <laughs> Oh, we have a, a question from the audience. Do either of you have uh, any Cherokee heritage yourselves? Yes, very much. Very much so. That and uh, Sue, I believe, as well. Oh, cool. 
I know that my grandfather had some Native American. I'm not really sure if it was Cherokee or if it was Creek, maybe. I'm not positive about that. Pretty likely for this area, I'd say. Yeah. And it yeah. would be one of those two, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, who, Amy, how did you first react when you were able to see your words captured in an illustration? It was pretty mind blowing, really. I was, uh, the first uh, image that Mara sent me was of one of our, I can't really say it. I don't even know. <laughs> uh, it was, it was a pretty creepy image too. And I, I was just kind of like, what, how did the words come in to make that? I don't you know. I mean, she, she did a fantastic job translating the ideas and the descriptions on the page into this, this really awesome piece of art. Uh, so uh, it was it was pretty amazing to see and and every time she's like I got something new to send you I'm like Ooh, what's it going to be this time and so and she did this really cool thing on where she illustrates on her iPad is that right yes um, so she illustrates on her iPad and she would do like a time lapse so she could go back to the beginning of where she started that piece of art and it would I could click play and watch watch the wheels turn. <laughs> I, I would totally watch that YouTube channel, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty neat to see. Uh, maybe the publisher needs to, to put some, some little uh, bonuses on the website with stuff like that. That could be some behind the scenes stuff. That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> if I can figure out how to cut out the references of me doing an arm pose, that'd be great. <laughs> the hand? Yeah, the hand specifically. God. <laughs> Doing some <laughs> princess way. <laughs> okay, yes, I, I guess I didn't do a, a very good summary of, of the book itself. So um, uh, we have the question, what is the story about? What is the uh, main conflict? Oh, sorry. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> that would probably be my question, right? <laughs> I, uh, yeah, sure. Um, you, you have... The, the the first narrator you meet is is Wampus since the night of the Wampus cut. But um, the character struggles with whether or not she's a monster. She doesn't really want to necessarily be a monster, but she really embraces and has fun with with being the Wampus cat. So she has kind of a daytime job where she's human, and a nighttime where she becomes this cat. And um, there are some murders that have been happening in the area and she's been called on uh, to help a group of marshals uh, try and solve this crime. And um, she's got a lot of secrets that she's trying to keep from them. And they have some secrets they're trying to keep from her too. So it kind of plays out really interesting. And I, I hope, I hope that you all enjoy uh, solving the mystery along with her. Yeah, I, I certainly got like a CSI meets uh, Supernatural kind of vibe <laughs> going on. That was cool. I, you know, another thing I thought was kind of interesting is, is, you know, speculating about, you know, when you're talking about supernatural creatures like, like a wampus cat and things like that, uh, you know, what kind of agency they have in their, you know, beastly form, you know, versus human form, like how those thought processes work. And, you know, because I know there's plenty of legends out there about various various creatures that humans transform into and some interpretations have them completely unable to control themselves. And whereas in this, I felt like she had some agency. Mm -hmm. yeah, I thought that was cool. And I, I, I had fun playing with that too. There were, that was um, my editor's suggestion was to, you know, well, you said that she, they kind of can not necessarily talk to each other, but they kind of, you know, can send each other vibes or thoughts or something like that. And, uh, I had some fun playing with that once that was suggested as a actual, yeah, run with that. So uh, I, I, it is fun to see <laughs> some of her cat-like responses to things <laughs> and the cat's like, oh man, but I really wanted to, okay. I couldn't <laughs> it's like, oh, mom, can't we? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not familiar with that kind of thing at all, you know, having a toddler. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, what, uh, Amy, what advice would you have for aspiring authors? Right. <laughs> I, I know that sounds just really simple and silly, but, uh, 
I have a hard time sometimes, and actually um, Dustin helps me with this sometimes. Mara too. I will. They're like, well, what are you doing? I'm like, I should be writing, but I'm not really doing anything right now. Okay, well, let's do something. So uh, I, it helps to have a, a buddy that's going to like tag team with you. We will do what we call writing sprints uh, alongside. It doesn't matter if we're in the same place or not, but um, we'll do that kind of thing. But as long as you're trying to, to write and to do some little bit, and I don't mean every single day, I'll sit down to write something and, and I'll spend 45 minutes doing research on, oddly, I get hung up on names. Oh. It takes me forever to name characters. And so when I finally get a name, I'm like, okay, that shouldn't have taken me that long, but uh, I want to make sure that it fits just right. So but I um, will spend time doing research. But if you're doing something that's kind of, uh, it's moving you towards that goal, then, you know, even if you don't get something written on the page every single day, then you're doing something towards that goal. And to always, you know, first draft, there is no such thing as a perfect first draft. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, so that can't be something that we, any of us will really achieve. I, my first novel, I think I have seven or eight drafts of it. And that's a lot for, a novel like of that length so uh you know you're never going to have a very perfect first anything yeah. but if you're trying to do that and trying to make yourself sit down and focus and i know i need to set aside this much time to to write or to at least think about your project and where you want it to go mm -hmm. i think that's yeah, i guess i've often heard perfect is the enemy of good <laughs> <laughs> or even done <laughs> um Let's see, we've got some questions from the audience. Uh, so, let's see, ah, do either the author or the illustrator have an agent? And if so, how difficult was it to find an agent? Um, this person is trying to do that right now and not having a lot of luck. I do not have an agent, um, but um, I did query a little bit and work with Dustin at Big Small Town. I've done other projects with him in the past. And um, so, coming to him with this one was kind of like, okay, yeah, I know. So just, I don't have an agent, but some uh, companies like uh, Big Small Town will accept queries and you have different editors and different people working for the company that can accept and decide what kind of things to do with that. So some uh, companies require you to bring something to them through an agent and others not necessarily, you can directly query them. So uh, I've got to do a little bit of research and what you're looking for in your publisher. Okay. Um, Mara, what was your biggest takeaway as an illustrator for a book for the first time? Your team is invaluable. And to have a great team is, to have everything is my biggest takeaway. I was very worried about working with people. I had never collaborated and made my art into something for someone else before. It was very intimidating but it's also very rewarding. My biggest takeaway would be don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Some wonderful things can happen when you open yourself up to these possibilities and opportunities. And it is so important just to not stay in your hermit shell. Where even though it's cozy and comfortable, trust me, I know. <laughs> no, and uh, Mara, how, how long did it take you to illustrate the book? For the initial batch of drawings that we had decided upon with the first draft, it took around three to four months. And once we got the rest of them added in, I would say it took probably about a month, maybe two months after edits were thrown in and color adjustments, trying to make sure that, you know, they popped on the page as much as they did on the screen because you always have that worry of, is it going to look as vibrant on the page as it is on the screen right now? So I would say all in all, probably four to seven months would be about how long it took just after deciding to tinker with everything because perfectionism, like you said, is <laughs> the enemy of done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Mara, what advice do you have for aspiring artists? Learn to tell the difference between constructive criticism and bullying. Mm. I struggled with that for so many years from people that I thought were supposed to be supporting me as fellow artists. And your art's not going to be for everyone. And that's okay. If it's for you, then it's for you. As long as it makes you feel something, that's what's important. 
be proud of your work. Don't be worried, oh, what will somebody think about it? If you want to evoke a certain emotion, pour your feelings into that piece and you will see it come back to you. That's kind of beautiful. I think that's something that you could say for a lot of different things, really. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's kind of stand up for yourself. That's, that's a great message. Um, yeah. <laughs> it is. It really is, especially nowadays. Um, so, uh, so for for both of you guys, I guess we'll start with Mara. Um, what what next projects do you have in the works? Well, me and Amy are hopefully collaborating on something, but I can't give any details away. Aside from that, I really don't have anything lined up. I'm always looking for somebody that's interested in starting a new project. So you need some illustrations done. I'm your Google. Let me know. I'll send you a portfolio. But um, hopefully I get to do more with Amy. But right now it's just kind of seeing where the wind takes me at this point. Cool. Amy, any, any upcoming projects? I'm, I'm working on something right now with Big Small Town. Um, so I'm, I'm not at liberty to give too many details just yet, but it's, uh, hopefully something in March coming your way. So I, I hope that'll work out for our timeline and everything and, and have something else for you guys to read soon. Very cool. I mean, based on some of the answers we've been getting, I'd, I'd recommend people, you know, follow Big Small Town Books because if you're interested in maybe pitching a book, you could go to their website or if you want to see what's coming up or, you know, get, get an illustrator, all those things seem to be available uh, through the publisher. So that that's a good resource. Um, uh, before we move on, I, I, this, this video is part of our haunted happenings thing at the library. And if you're, you're watching this and want to get credit for points for your team, you need to use the code 7790 when you're putting it in on the website. So just wanted to slip that in there. Couldn't do that at the beginning. So we made sure people are watching. Okay. So, um, uh, I do have an announcement to make, uh, about the book. So due to some shipping delays, thanks to COVID-19, uh, Big Small Town Books is announcing a special release week deal of Night of the Wampus. Everyone who has pre-ordered the book, plus any additional readers who order a hardcover edition of the book by this Sunday, that's October 18th, will also receive a free adhesive book plate signed by the author and illustrator featuring exclusive artwork from his illustrator Mara Buchanan, as well as a free download of the Kindle ebook of Night of the Wampus available Sunday so that they can start reading the story and experiencing the incredible illustrations right away. Uh, book plates will be mailed out as soon as they arrive and we can get them signed. So that's exciting. Yeah, you, you might want to read that Kindle edition so that you can like, I don't know, like get under the covers and be like, ooh, ooh it's spooky. <laughs> so, uh, it does look really neat in that Kindle edition too. Yeah, yeah, because the the arc I read was ebook edition, so it, it it worked out really great. I I still got a good impact of the artwork from that. So, and of course, I mean, I'm a librarian. I love reading in all different styles, and but you know, sometimes it's easier with an ebook because I can just grab my phone, get in bed. You know, it's nice. Okay. Um, so, do you guys have anything else you'd like to discuss about the book? Anything? Any comments? Okay, we have a, let's see, I think we have a question in the chat. Uh, oh, I think we, oh, we already, yeah, we already answered that. It's cool. <laughs> okay, so um, I guess we will have an excerpt from the book, if, if you'd please. Hang on, I have to pull it up. There you go. Oh, and but then I, after I don't the have excerpt, it memorized yet. Uh, we'll also be having an art reveal. So, was that first or? Hi, uh, disembodied voice from the future. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually going to reveal the artwork while Amy is reading the excerpt. So, people will get to check that out and kind of get put in the mood because this piece of art is actually from the scene that Amy will be reading. Oh, cool. And bear with me. It's been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this is from Night of the Wampus. I always did my worst in the wee hours, in the daylight that came after I knew I'd be eaten alive with guilt. I didn't ask for this curse, or perhaps it's a blessing, but it is mine to endure, 
hunter and hunted, wrapped in one sleek, black, furry, yes, furry body. I had been this way for as long as I could remember, but I had no memories from before, something I expect was also part of this wretched deal. It's said that curiosity killed the cat, but in my case, it created the cat, or so the legend went. The body of my latest victim lay before me, crimson fountains oozing from claw and fang marks alike and seeping into the ground. The forest had begun to absorb the destruction. Nature would play its role in helping clean up what was left of my kill. I wiped my mouth with my front leg and realized I had missed some. A swipe of my tongue cleaned the remaining evidence of the sordid deed from my face. My tail flicked with satisfaction as I licked my, at my paws, savoring the last taste of my prey. A stick snapped in the darkness of the forest. My ears perked at the sound. I studied the woods for a moment before pulling my shadowy body up to the first solid branch of a nearby tree, close enough still to make out the scent of my kill. I perched, waiting to see what stalked about the wood, about in the woods, in my woods. My tail curled around the branch and I gazed into the darkness. Another silly teenager proving his bravery perhaps, or my favorite, a group of monster hunters with cameras and all the stealth of a bright red fire truck blaring sirens and speeding through the streets, subtle. A figure crept into the clearing on four legs, not a glory seeker, but an animal craving my leftovers. The beast stayed in the shadows, kept its head low and slunk slowly towards the bloody remains. The underbrush crunched and rustled as the creature whose scent I couldn't quite place sniffed and licked its muzzle. It let out a low guttural growl. I waited for it to move into the moonlight to confirm another theory, that it was one of those damn coyotes always on the prowl. But it hadn't called for its pack, yet. I studied the creature as it continued around the periphery, about to write it off as not, as not, to wor not worth the worry. I left it to finish off my quarry and be gone. But then my eyes widened in shock as the figure rose to stand on its back legs and walked upright the rest of the way to the blood-soaked ground to investigate. It sniffed the air, dense and heavy with the coppery tang, and it stopped. Suddenly it threw its head back and let out a haunting howl that was answered in kind within moments. Though I had never seen an animal walk in that way, I suspected other creatures like me might be out there. I had only seen it stand on two legs, but I knew. Somehow, I just knew. If this creature had scented my kill, it wouldn't take long for it to discover me. The blood on its claws, uh, the blood on my claws, fangs, and fur were the only thing masking the scent at the moment. I needed to move before its friends showed up. My heart raced as I forced myself to wait, clinging to the tree in anticipation of the chase I was sure would ensue if I was caught. I could attack when the creature came closer, but not with more on their way. I needed a closer look. Oh, that took me to the woods. <laughs> <laughs> I have a very clear vision of what where all of that scene and some other scenes like that take place. Mm -hmm. So, and, and when I would go hiking different places, mm -hmm. I'd be like, Ooh, that's a good scene. I'd take pictures of things and uh, that kind of ended up being places that I've visited or hiked or some of them purely from my brain. <laughs> I think anyone that's hiked around anywhere in this area here in Tennessee or over in North Carolina, I could probably get a pretty good vision of that <laughs> mm -hmm. for sure. A lot of lovely hiking trails. So, so uh, personally, I thought it was great. I I would like to see more. I want to know more of what happens with Lila. I could I could see a TV show or a graphic novel. I mean, this it's just the the sky's the limit. It's it's. I'd be excited to see more. Do, do we think we might see more of, that, of the story? That's a possibility. <laughs> wink wink. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's well, I, I, so I certainly hope so. Uh, the disembodied voice of the publisher, no. who also wants to see more. If that tells <laughs> you, it's like hint, hint, hint. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Well, um, do we have any more questions from the audience? Uh, please feel free to type them in the chat. Looks like we're, we're getting some hype from New York City. That's great to see. That is wonderful. Woo. Thank you, Brenton. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it, it was great talking to you guys. Thank you so much for coming out and telling us about this new book. I'm, I'm super excited. Um, uh, thanks, Dustin, of course, for coordinating all this and, and Big Small Town Books for giving me more content. Perks of being a librarian, I get those arcs ahead of time. So <laughs> um, I'm, I'm happy to see some more. So well, we appreciate you hosting us this evening. It's been an, an nice chatting with you and and getting some good questions. Thank you from the audience. The yes, thank you very much. Um, if people are interested in ordering the book uh, and getting those book plates and all that cool stuff, uh, go to www.bigsmalltownbooks.com. Uh, you can place an order there and, and just get more info about what's going on. So, all right, everyone. Um, have a good night and, and enjoy spooky season. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks. <laughs>